right. Well, welcome everyone to our confirmation service on Reformation Day. This is a, a big day for uh, our youth, and uh, as they've been working very hard for two years now, um, preparing for to confirm their faith in in our Lord and their Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Jim Kent, the pastor here at First Lutheran Church, and I want to welcome you all to our worship service this morning. As we begin our worship, we will rise and remember that we are all baptized children of God, baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come into God's house, let us now confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of His Son, Jesus Christ, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son, Jesus, to die for you, and for His sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Consolation. Protect us from the devil's might 
through Jesus our salvation, who by his death upon a tree has rescued us from misery. To this we hold forever. May the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you as creatures who are among all who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We humbly thank you that we are justified by your grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Help us to live our lives in faith, trusting in you and you alone for all things. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the Please. Festival of Reformation is from Revelation to St. John chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an internal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John 8, 12 tells us when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When I think about darkness, I think about living under a shadow and how that can make you feel. This verse shows that even when we are having a hard time, Jesus will lead us to light and never leave us in darkness. In the verses prior, Jesus says to a woman who committed adultery, has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and from now on, sin no more. By darkness, Jesus means we are not in the light of his presence and we are not following him. The woman was in darkness because she had committed adultery. This relates to my verse because Jesus told the woman to not sin, and if we don't sin, we are following Jesus. And if we follow him, we, have, we will have eternal life and not be in darkness. We are the light when we are in God's word and following his path for us. So being in the light helps me because I can trust that God will give me courage. This verse shows me a way to share Jesus with others because it educates others about what sin is and how we avoid it. And when we disobey him, we need to ask for forgiveness. Then he brings us back into his light by forgiving our sins. My verse can help share the good news of salvation through Jesus with a non-believer. My verse would be introduced in a conversation through questions. I would tell that person how if we follow Jesus and don't sin, we will be in the light and not in the darkness. When we are in the darkness because of sin, I could share Jesus' promise to forgive us when we confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. My confirmation verse is Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, which says, And remember I am with you always, to the end of the age. This verse was the last thing Jesus said to his disciples to assure them he would always be with them, even though he was going to be with his Father in heaven. Jesus tells me God is always with me at my side and will never leave me. He loves me no matter what and brings out the best in me. God is always near, watching us and influencing our lives. He will never abandon us no matter what we say or think about him. This verse also reminds us to have faith in God even when we have doubts. Sometimes when we pray, he gives us an answer, like yes, no, be patient. However, even when we don't hear an answer, he still listens to our prayers. We may not, we may not always like the answer we get, but this verse also reminds us to trust in him. He loves us, knows what is best for us, and has a plan for our lives. God gives us everything we have, from food on the table to clothes on our backs. He's loving even when we don't love him back. Whenever I'm worried or scared, I always have someone to talk to. He will never leave my side. The world is constantly changing, but one thing remains the same. God loves each and every one of us, no matter who we are or where we came from. God will never abandon us. I can share this verse with someone if they're unhappy, scared, or confused. I can remind them to talk with God and please to raise his in his hands. He needs to know that God will always listen to them, even if they don't think he does. I can offer to pray with them, remind them of gifts. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just really nervous. I'm, I'm really sorry. Give them, remind them of the gifts God has given them and to recognize his presence in their lives. He's always watching over us and keeping us safe. 
God is truly with us to the end of the age. The epistle is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to, to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. We are justified by his grace as, as a gift. Through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received as by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? Is it excluded? By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by the faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Before God formed you in the womb, God knew you. Before you were born, God set you apart. It's a verse I chose for my statement of faith, the call of Jeremiah. This verse comforts me in knowing that God loved me in spirit before I was created. While I was being created, God consecrated me. He set me apart. I was made on purpose to be a messenger for his word. Jeremiah was a prophet who was ridiculed and hated, and he remained faithful to God. So God came to him to comfort and guide him. Jeremiah was young, probably younger than 20 years, and this made him insecure. God instructed him to speak, speak his words to overcome his hesitation. Patient, patient Jeremiah stands in the stands is an example of faithfulness to the Lord during all of his trials. The confirmation verse directs me towards wanting to listen to God's teachings and spread his word. While I want to do these things to live as God's child, I know I can't on my own. I need his guidance through many ways. For an example, I get guidance and teaching from my parents, the Bible, Sunday school, and church. I also need to ask for forgiveness of my sins to help me be closer to him. That's how God makes me feel loved and on purpose. In doing this, it inspires me to share Jesus with others. Jesus was given to us, free us from our sins. He was born, lived, and then died on the cross so we could go to heaven instead of hell. Only through Jesus can we make it into heaven to be with God. Jesus is our salvation. Knowing that God knew me before he made me and then made me sacred makes me want to share the good news of salvation through Jesus with non-believers. Even when I'm at school and I hear my peers talking, I'm always ready to speak about or answer questions about Jesus. A lot of kids don't know what it means to be a Christian or even what one is. They don't, know, they don't even know about Jesus and his sacrifice for us. My family and I helped someone baptize just by learning from the family and learning our love for God. And this person was from a family of atheists. We always try to bring friends to church with us so they can meet our church family and listen to God's word and his teachings. I will continue to be God's messenger and will pass the knowledge I've learned from my confirmation class and my Christian upbringing. God has so much love for us. He not only made us, his, made us this beautiful world, gave us amazing animals for many purposes, and took care of our needs, but more importantly, he gave us his only son for us so our sins could be forgiven. The Bible verse I chose is Hebrews 13.5. It says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. This verse points to Jesus because nowadays everyone wants to be trending with the current fashion, have the next best phone, or get the new shoes. These things can pull us away from God. They can become your new favorite thing. But God should always be put first in our whole lives. This verse also points me to Jesus because it shows that he'll never leave me or forsake me, even in the rough times. Whereas objects or people will sometimes leave you for someone or something else. Jesus won't. He loves everybody. Love is the most important thing to feel. He died on the cross to save us from our sins. It didn't benefit him at all. He loves us. I could use this verse to help someone draw closer to Jesus and come to believe and trust him. For example, if someone's struggling 
or something, like if they don't have enough money or clothes or food, you could try and invite them to come to church. They could hear how to pray or find some way for them to ask God for help. You can bring them back a few times to let them get closer to the people, pastor, and most importantly, God. Even if you just plant the seed, they'll be more open to coming from a friend. God would never leave them nor forsake them, just like it says. Tell them they're welcome anytime. Please rise for the gospel. Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and we have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Uh, the verse I chose for my confirmation verse is 1, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us for our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. There are no humans in the world that are sinless. Since everyone in this world sins, the only way to be forgiven is to confess your sins to God. You can confess straight to God or during church or through your preacher. People sin by thought, word, and deed. If a person thinks he, is, he has not committed any sins, then he is wrong and deceiving him, himself, and God. If we know our sins but don't feel sorry, God knows what's in your, our hearts and that would still be deceiving God. We would only hurt ourselves and walk in darkness. If we actually are sorry and ask God to forgive us, he will. How do we know that? Because we are told so in 1 John 1 verse 9. He is faithful to us because he doesn't give up and will always be there for us. He is also a just God, and we know that we are treated with mercy and grace, even though we don't deserve it. He showed us this by dying on the cross for us. If I had a, have a friend who is a non-believer and sins a lot or even a little, I could bring him to church and have him talk to the preacher to learn how God is just and merciful. I could first show him this verse because it should be part of the conversation to show him that he can be forgiven for his sins that he has committed. This verse points to Jesus by talking about bringing us together through confessing our sins. Since God is faithful, he would forgive us and bring my friend and I closer. Then I could help him to not sin as much by taking him to church and telling him to ask for forgiveness. It, it, it's not too late for him to ask God to forgive him to, and try change his life so that he doesn't keep doing the same bad things. For my confirmation verse, I chose Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. My verse is part of a letter Paul is writing to the Ephesians while imprisoned in Rome around 60 to 61 AD. The purpose of this letter is to encourage the Gentiles that they are equal in the eyes of God and to inform the Gentiles and Jews that all people who believe that they are part of Christ. My chosen confirmation verse directs me to Jesus because it tells me 
how, about how Jesus is the Lord and Savior of everyone who believes, and they will be saved by his grace. Luther's small catechism defines grace as God's undeserved favor towards sinners. This means that he loves us unconditionally and forgives us even though we don't really deserve it. God sacrificed his only son to save us from eternal death. This also drives me from sin. It tells me about how God will save me from sin, and if I just believe in him, follow his word, and ask for forgiveness. Finally, this will direct me away from Satan, because Satan cannot promise me to be saved from eternal death and perishing, but God can. Another positive effect this verse has is that it can be shared with non-believers to help them come to faith. A common misconception about the Lord is that to be brought into his family, you must never sin and live a perfect life. This cannot be further from the truth. God knows our flaws and loves us anyway. If you believe in the Lord and ask for forgiveness, you will be saved and enter the kingdom of heaven. If you show a non-believer this verse, it could very well change their views and could call them to faith. Good morning, everyone, on this day of celebration, and congratulations, confirmands. Your statements of faith were beautiful. We pray. Almighty Heavenly Father, you who made the heavens, the seas, and the springs of water, on earth you have no equal. On this glorious day of the reformation of our church and confirmation for six special young people who love you, we worship you in the beauty of holiness. We rejoice and give glory to you that by your grace we have been saved through faith alone in Christ Jesus, a gift from you, not by any works we have done, but solely because of your unending embrace of love made manifest upon the cross. May the Reformation be for every person in every generation, that they may hear the good news of their Savior and confess their sins before you, receiving your faithful and just forgiveness that cleanses us from all unrighteousness, freeing us from the slavery of sin, and restoring our communion with you. 
Dear Lord, today we celebrate Bennett, Clarissa, Drew, Emma, Caitlin, and Vince. For through the work of the Holy Spirit, they have reaffirmed their baptism in their hearts and boldly proclaimed their unequivocal faith in Christ Jesus as their Savior. We rejoice knowing how pleasing this is to you, for you knew each of them in the womb and consecrated them to your service before they were born. May their lives shine brightly in the light of Jesus, the light of the world, that they will never walk in darkness, but reflect an enduring hope of their future heavenly joy in all their days. Father, on this special day of prayerful adoration and thanksgiving to you, we also lift up prayers of petition, holding close the promise of our good shepherd to never leave or forsake us. Free us from the love of money and the other things of this world that takes away our focus from you. And let us be content with what you have given us. May our joy be complete only through your scripture and steadfast love. Listen to our cries for mercy on those among us who are coping with chronic pain or illness of the body or mind. Give them your healing presence and the hope of the resurrection. Bestow your calming reassurance on those struggling with hardships or fear brought about by this most difficult and challenging year. And keep your angels in charge of all who are protecting and caring for us during the prolonged pandemic. And Lord, cast your favor on our nation on the cusp of our national election, for we need you. Let your word give clarity to the many issues we face and the leaders we elect, that through it all, you, our fortress and ultimate authority, remain the foundation on which our nation prospers. Everlasting God, may your name be exalted among all the nations, and may the gospel through which we hear and know of your grace, and which was contended for by the courage of the reformers long ago against many and great enemies, stand as our victorious shield against the evils of today's world. May we all echo the boldness of those you love who were confirmed in Christ this morning, and with hearts ever faithful, go and be disciples of Jesus, true to his gospel, and teaching others to observe his commandments, while beholding his promise to be with us always until the end of the age. For it is in him, we, your son, our Lord and Savior, that we joyfully and thankfully pray. Amen. And now we continue with the prayer of our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We've worshiped God with our song, with our prayers, by listening to his word. We also worship God with our tithes and offerings, giving back a portion of that which he has given to us. You are able to contribute, continue worshiping God in this way through online giving. Uh, you can also mail your offering into the church or uh, bring it by. Show us a uh, let us see your face in the office, and uh, as you do that, bring your offering to you. You're welcome to do that. Let us now give thanks to God for all that he has given to us. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. If the dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Amen. At this time, I will invite the confirmants to come forward for the rite of confirmation. And uh, as they are coming forward, uh, they'll take a, a place on the, the rail. Um, and as they come forward, I want to thank them for their... Um, stand in front of the rail. Yeah. Um, I want to thank them for their, uh, their statements of faith. Um, they were drawn from essays that they wrote on their confirmation verse, and uh, you all did a very excellent job of, um, of writing your statement of faith based on that verse. And that verse is, is a part of you now. That verse is something that I hope you'll remember all the days of your life um, and remember what it means to you as you carry your life of faith into the future. Um, you are God's children. And as God's children, you are called to witness your faith to those around you, not just today, but every day. And so um, I, my prayer for all of you is that you continue to be faithful in the Lord um, as you grow and uh, become young men and women who use the gifts that God has given you, to use those gifts in accord with his will 
And that will can be found for you in your prayers and in his word. And uh, in our gospel, Jesus told us today, abide in me. Abide in me. And what that means is grasp hold of me. Immerse yourself in me. Live in me. And we do that through our worship, through our prayers, and through clinging to his word. Because in that word is the truth. And that truth will set you free. It will set you free from the power of sin, death, and the devil. Not just today, but for your whole life and on into eternity. And so, please, uh, you know, my prayer, my plea, is to remain faithful by clinging to that word, the truth found in that word, all the days of your life. And so, beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Isn't that right, Drew? Yeah, that was your verse. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. So I have a series of questions, and I would like you all to answer aloud, and in the congregation, answer in your hearts, please. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge that the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe. In God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Yes, I do. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from the scriptures, as you have learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true? Yes, I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word and deed, to remain true to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and received into the teaching of the Lord, that you have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins, 
And as you continue to hear the Lord's word and to receive his blessed sacrament, may he who has begun this good work in you bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to kneel. Clarissa Marie Callis, Andrew Michael Cummings, Caitlin Elizabeth Evans, Emma Christine Kirkpatrick, Vincent James Will, and Bennett Andrew Zervalik. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you all the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all of your sins. May he strengthen you all with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Please pray along with me. Clarissa chose Hebrews 13, verse 5. Father, at times it is hard to avoid overly cherishing the perishable things of the world. Thank you for touching Clarissa's heart with the importance of keeping you first in her life, above all else. Bless her exceedingly abundantly, more than she could ask or imagine, as she continues to look to you as Lord over all. Drew chose Matthew 28, verse 20. What a wonderful consolation it is, Lord, to know and regularly, regularly recall that you, God, keep your promises. One of those is important to Drew, to know that you are with him always. You have promised this, and it is a great comfort that no matter what is swirling around him in this world, you are there, and through you, he can have peace. Caitlin chose Jeremiah 1, verse 5. Lord, Caitlin believes your word to Jeremiah and to her that you, all-knowing, omniscient God, knew her and set her apart for your special purpose even before she was born. Continue to assure her of this when the things of this world cause her to feel unsure. Unfold your good and perfect will in her life. Emma chose John 8, verse 12. Father God, thank you for shining your light into this world and specifically into Emma's life by faith through baptism. As she now shares her faith openly with our congregation and worshipers today, grant her the courage to go forth from here and continue to shine the light of your love and message of salvation to all she meets. Vince chose 1 John 1, verse 9. Lord God, 1 John 1, verse 9 brings comfort to all of us who realize we are sinners and in need of a Savior. Thank you for helping Vince to understand this. Strengthen his trust in your word that promises forgiveness to all who confess their sins before you. As you forgive him, please also grant him your peace and renew his joy. And Bennett chose Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. Lord, many in the world put their hope in their own ability to be good. But Bennett knows that your word tells us we are not saved by our own doing, but by your grace through faith because of Jesus our Savior. Remind him of this when he strives and fails. Assure him again and again that he is righteous before you because of Jesus. Please rise. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith they may continue steadfast and victorious to this day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. 
We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> Go back to your seats. It was a, a, it's a great day to, to be a, a to do this. It's a great privilege to have um, taught and engaged with, with you all for the last two years. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it is one of the pleasures of being a pastor that I get to, to do that. And so thank you all for, for that. I want to thank you also for your uh, statements of faith. Um, they are an encouragement to all of us. Um, your message today to, to all of us is so encouraging to know that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He's your Lord and Savior. And through him, we have all received the gift of faith, the gift of forgiveness, and the gift of eternal life that sustain us all the way into the future and into eternity. And so thank you all for giving us that gift of your words based on God's word today. Uh, we also have a number of people that I would like to just thank for um, all the things that went on. I want to thank uh, Rob Beeson and uh, our virtual choir. Uh, Rob uh, did a great job pulling that together to give us a special Reformation uh, service today um, under the circumstances, and I do thank him very much for that. Um, I also want to thank uh, Moy Schroeder for the masks. Um, you'll notice all the Coffermans had a mask uh, that matched, and uh, Moy Schroeder donated the fabric. Uh, Shauna Kent made them, and I want to thank both of them for uh, making that a uh, special day for them uh, and a special gift. I want to thank uh, Beatrice again for the beautiful uh, music today. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for the banners. Uh, Beatrice was uh, cut out all the materials, and I want to thank you for your hard work on that to make it uh, a special keepsake for all of our confirmants. And Last and definitely not least, I want to thank the families, the moms, the dads, the sisters, the brothers, uh, the grandmas and grandpas, uh, the aunts and uncles, all who have been instrumental in bringing these young people to this point in their lives of faith. Um, we all realized the day we were baptized, uh, you know, there's a big, the, the, the Great Commission says, Go and baptize, okay? That's part one. Part two is teach them, teach them. And the teaching gets done at church, of course. It gets done in, in school, of course, but it gets done in the home. And I want to thank the parents, uh, the brothers and sisters, the whole family for, for continuing to bring these young people up in faith. And uh, my prayer is that you will be able to continue to do that all the days of your life. As always, it is our uh, privilege to pray, and I ask uh, that you would uh, submit your prayer request. Make sure that, uh, let us know how those prayer requests are going as we go to our Father in prayer. And uh, so please make those prayer requests known to us. As we go out into the world, we know that we do not ever go alone. We go with the Lord's blessing. Not only do we abide in him, but more importantly, he abides in us. And so let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Heaven 
And go into the world, let us joyfully proclaim God's word and enthusiastically share Christ's love. Amen. I will invite the uh, congregation online to stick around and continue to fellowship as we uh, prepare for adult Bible study at 1115. And I invite the confirmation families to uh, stick around for a few pictures. <laughs> 